Welcome to Roundup Review's Best, Worst, and Blandest Awards. These are for games that were released in 2023 and that I played in 2023. I wasn't about to spend money on Lord of the Rings, Golems to confirm popular opinion, and I didn't have $60 and 600 hours to sink into Baldur's Gate 3. I want to give two quick honorable mentions to Shadows of Doubt and Metroid Prime Remastered. Shadows of Doubt is really fun and engaging, but it's still in early access. Metroid Prime Remastered is a game I already love, with the best graphics ever seen on Switch, but it's still a game from 2001 and has no place in a list of games from 2023. Okay? Okay. The thing about horror games is that the longer they go on, the less scary they get. However, Amnesia the Bunker managed to keep me tense until the very end. It made me feel terror that no other Amnesia game has made me feel since Dark Descent. Does this mean you'll replay to check out our randomized element? Nope. I'm a Persona fan. I love Persona 5 and I love Persona 5 Strikers. But Atlas has been cranking out all these spin-offs in order to stave off having to make Persona 6 for fuck's sake, and it feels like the creativity well has finally dried up. Persona 5 Tactica was the Persona 5 spin-off that finally made me sick of the whole ordeal. Stay tuned for Atlas's next announcement, the Persona 5 TikTok filter. I downloaded Payday 3 to play it with friends who ultimately never played it. Therefore, my attempts to play it in single player cued me into the fact that it was balanced for multiple people, and playing with random people online is a miserable experience. But it's fun with friends! Yeah, and so is poking roadkill with a stick. You wanna base a game around it? Remnant 2 is the most recent game I've played on this list, so I'm only putting it in fourth to account for recency bias. That being said, it's an extremely fun third-person shooter Souls game, and I love how the setting keeps changing between different dying fantasy worlds being killed by unique bosses. It's like touring AAA studio offices. Ha ha. When it comes to creative worlds being based on the minds of characters, the bar for creativity is Persona 5, or the Dream Team, plug plug. The Steam blurb for Figment 2, Creed Valley, boasts piano bridges and dancing plants, the wacky and creative setting equivalent of white noise. Besides that, it's a perfectly functional, if a bit janky, isometric puzzle platformer, the indie game equivalent of white noise. It's like a white noise sandwich with decent sound design in the middle. You can learn a lot more from a failure than you can from a success. If you're interested in making or designing a video game, I genuinely recommend The Last Case of Benedict Fox. It drew me in with the unique premise and striking atmosphere, then pushed me away with some horrible game design. It felt like the map design team, the combat team, the movement team were all working separately and not allowed to talk to each other. It appears that the dev team pulled it together and fixed a lot of the problems that the game had. Great on the dev team, but that means it may not be a great learning tool anymore. Such is the risk with trying to critique art that can be changed or updated post-release. 2023 was a great year for video game players. A shame about the developers, but I digress. The year kicked off with a bang in the form of Hi-Fi Rush, some of the best sound design I've heard, and the most impressive visuals I've seen in a game perhaps ever. Beyond that, it's just plain old fun. Good on you, Shinji Mikami. Atomic Heart is a game that could've worked. All you needed was a better story with more interesting characters, with better dialogue, and more engaging set pieces than just grey concrete walls, and actual immersive sim mechanics where the different elements do more than simply damage an enemy. Do all of that and hey presto, you've got a game that you've already played 16 years ago. Did you know that Overwatch 2 drops the Early Access label and officially released this year? Fuck, I'll take any excuse to piss all over Blizzard. So here's your reminder that Blizzard is awful and you shouldn't buy any of their games. Thank you. The Game Awards does this thing every year where they pick one indie game to tokenly stand among the big leagues so that they can give off the impression that they actually give a fuck about small developers. This year it was Sea of Stars, a game so great that the Game Awards didn't even let them give their 30 second acceptance speech. But I see you, Sabotage, and I for one think you're too good for that glorified commercial break in the first place. I was looking through the list of games that I played this year and saw a game called Potion Craft Alchemy Simulator. I then had to google the game to see what the fuck it was and how it ended up on my list, and it was only when looking at images that I remembered that I had played it. And that, kids, is what gives you the edge in a mediocrity contest. I'm about to break one of my rules here, but they are my rules, so I get to decide when to break them. I left town for five days, and in those five days, the day before launched, got shit on by the public and critics alike, then the studio shut down, and the game was pulled from Steam. I didn't play the game because I didn't even get the chance, but fuck it, that whole situation's gotta count for something, so here it is. 
When it came time to decide my favorites of the year, there was only one game that consistently jumped to mind, and that was Cassette Beasts. After originally brushing it aside as another Pokemon ripoff, it turned out to be an actual elevation of the monster collecting format, with its own unique ideas, gameplay, design, and visuals. And I say without hyperbole that even with my rose tinted glasses firmly in front of my eyes, Cassette Beasts is more fun than any Pokemon game that I have ever played. Yes, this includes Arceus, so stop typing. Combine boring exploration with janky combat and make every quest a game of telephone. Set it in the most generic sci-fi setting imaginable with sci-fi plot 5B and sprinkle in the most boring characters ever written. Starfield? More like Bland Field. That wasn't your best joke, Meta. No worries, I'll just wait for the modders to write a better one. There were a lot of terrible, awful, no good, very bad games this year. Gollum, Modern Warfare 3, that King Kong thing, Avatar but not that Avatar. But these are all games that everyone knew would be bad. And even though myself and most people with pattern recognition skills could have told you that Redfall title drop was doomed to be a disaster, being developed by Arcane, published by Bethesda, and paraded as Xbox's killer app, I believe that those who were stung by this game are on much firmer grounds for complaint. Redfall had everything going for it with a multi-million dollar budget and they still fucked up, but it made for a very wholesome moment where the entire gaming community came together, put our differences aside, and held hands as we bonded over kicking Redfall to death. 